Welcome to Selectory, and today we'll be looking at one of the most popular trends of the year, the 10 highest grossing movies of 2021. Marvel movies were a big hit in 2021, occupying about one quarter of the domestic box office. Nine of the top 10 films in the US were either sequels or part of a larger franchise, which is great for business. The only exception was Free Guy, which at least provided something new. In the global film industry, there were two films from China that beat out everything but Spider-Man. Here are the highest grossing movies of 2021 at the domestic box office. Number 10, Free Guy. Disney's 20th Century Studios division, which has been the major player in the film industry since Disney's acquisition of Fox, hasn't had much luck at the box office. Their latest films, like The King's Man and West Side Story, have had lackluster earnings. Free Guy is the exception to that cold streak, making over $121 million in ticket sales. A box office surprise, even among fellow successful films in 2021, is a film that is original and not part of any franchise. The film was granted exclusive theatrical rights by Disney, and has exceeded the financial success of other more well-known titles such as Dune, Halloween Kills, and Godzilla vs. Kong. Number 9, Ghostbusters, Afterlife. Sony had a strong year with the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. These three movies all made the top 10 list for 2021. This is a step up from 2019, where only Spider-Man Far From Home made it to the top 10 list at spot number 7. Sony's most successful 2021 release is undoubtedly No Way Home, but the domestic performance of Ghostbusters Afterlife, illustrates one of the benefits of Sony's theatrical first distribution strategy during the pandemic. While select Sony titles have been sold to streaming services over the last two years, the studio remains committed to theatrical exclusivity, as its executives made abundantly clear at CinemaCon. The film had a strong footprint on PLF and IMAX screens, and it held up well at the box office for several weeks, with little competition from big-budget blockbusters until after Thanksgiving. Number 8. A Quiet Place Part 2. Reviewers had written their reviews, tickets had been sold, and everything was in place for the March 20, 2020 release of A Quiet Place Part 2. However, the world changed within days. Due to the pandemic, cinemas across the world closed. This forced marketers to shelve their marketing machine, which included a Super Bowl trailer, talk show appearances from the movie stars, and a world premiere at Lincoln Center. A Quiet Place Part 2 faced multiple delays as the COVID-19 crisis prevented Paramount from releasing the movie in theaters. Plans to release it in May and September 2020 were scrapped, in favor of an April 2021 release, but then plans changed again. Fans were disappointed when they found out that the film wouldn't be coming out until September 2021. However, John Krasinski announced on Twitter that the film would be released on May 28, which is Memorial Day weekend. Released in theaters for 45 days, it nearly matched the $50 million opening weekend of the original, and went on to become one of the top 10 highest grossing movies domestically. Number 7, No Time to Die. Organizing the release of a James Bond movie takes a lot of effort. Brand partnerships, junkets in countries around the world, and tie-ins from luxury car and alcohol brands, are just a few of the things that need to be coordinated with stakeholders across a number of companies. Originally set for an April 2020 release, the marketing campaign for No Time to Die had to be put on hold quickly, due to the onset of the pandemic. With the duration of the COVID-19 crisis still uncertain, the decision to reschedule its release to November 2020 seemed like a safe bet. However, by late 2020, it became clear that would not be the case, pushing No Time to Die to 2021. Anticipation for the film had grown somewhat stale, by the time it was released on October 8, 2021. The film's $55 million debut helped sustain Q3's momentum at the box office, but it still fell short of the heights achieved by Venom Let There Be Carnage. Number 6, Eternals. Eternals was the third MCU movie released by Disney in 2021, and the second to have a 45-day exclusive run in theaters, rather than the day-and-date strategy used for Black Widow. As with the MCU's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, Eternals is also a movie about comic book characters, most moviegoers will not be familiar with. Unlike with Shang-Chi, Eternals has an A-list cast of actors to help draw them in. Despite the similarities in their opening weekends, the two films could not be more different. Shang-Chi debuted to $75.3 million on 4,300 screens, while Eternals opened to $71.2 million on 4,090 screens. The latter film fell behind soon after, 
dropping 62% in its second weekend, and coming short of Shang-Chi's domestic come by $60 million or so. Mixed reviews weren't the only factor, increased competition in the run-up to the holidays is another reason they couldn't make it. Number 5, F9, The Fast Saga. After being delayed four times because of the pandemic, F9 finally arrived in North American theaters in June 2021. With the planned vaccine rollout still ongoing, and large parts of the country refusing to visit theaters, this was certainly not the typical summer movie season. Even so, F9 broke every previous record set during the COVID era, to deliver the highest opening weekend since the rise of Skywalker in 2019. It also boasted the highest screen count of the pandemic era, at the time of its release, thanks to the reopening of theaters in New York City and Los Angeles. The film was marketed aggressively, and it had the advantage of returning to theaters. The trailer was specifically designed to promote F9 as a back-to-theater experience, and Universal was very effective in doing so. It remained at the top to box office for three weekends, before it was surpassed by Disney's Black Widow. Number 4, Black Widow. It is only Disney's Black Widow that debuted in theaters simultaneously with its launch at home in 2021, and it ranks among the 10 highest earning films of the year. Originally announced for a May 1, 2020 release date, it ended up premiering a few months later due to the pandemic. This caused a domino effect with the release schedule of Marvel films, due to the sequential nature of the franchise. When the title finally came out on July 9, it had high expectations from audiences. Opening weekend earnings of $80 million set a new benchmark for a day and date title, but its availability at home dented its earnings early into its theatrical run. The movie star, Scarlett Johansson, sued Disney for its decision to give the film a day and date release, which she claimed had a detrimental impact on her own earnings. Number 3, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Venom became a surprise hit in 2018, and earned a massive $856 million at the worldwide box office, and $213 million in the US. So it was no surprise when just a few years later, a sequel, Venom Let There Be Carnage arrived in theaters. While Sony did not anticipate this film to match the box office numbers of the original, it was a delightful surprise that the film succeeded in earning $213 million domestically. This is enough to make it one of the three highest grossing films of the year. It has a much more mixed reception than many of the other films on this list. As can be seen in its middling rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Some critics thought it was long and exhausting, while others enjoyed its twists and turns. Number 2, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Disney's first Marvel movie to receive theatrical exclusivity during the pandemic, it had an additional challenge of responding to Black Widow's day and date release. With Black Widow being so popular in recent movies, it's hard to predict the success of her opponent, Shang-Chi. Fortunately, however, he ended up exceeding expectations and performed well at the box office. It probably drew in viewers with its focus on superhero action, which appealed to genre fans, while others were drawn to it because of its cinematography. The box office for Shang-Chi nearly matched Black Widow's opening weekend, and the film earned more money than the previous installment of the MCU saga through its domestic theatrical run. The movie sustained its numbers throughout the rest of 2021, thanks to a positive word of mouth from audiences and favorable reviews from critics, ending the year as the second highest grossing movie in North America. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 1, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Sony's Spider-Man No Way Home trailer was a huge success. It set viewership records when it surfaced on YouTube in August, and built hype for the film leading up to its December release. Excitement for the film intensified, when viewers caught glimpses of prior Spider-Man villains in the trailer, creating sustained buzz on social media. The worldwide pre-sale record set by the film, made it one of the most anticipated releases of the year. It is amazing how this film managed to secure the second biggest domestic opening weekend of all time. The movie's success proves that there is still a place for large, expensive films in cinemas during this time of universal streaming. No Way Home has grossed more than any other movie released in 2020 and 2021, domestically, in just three and a half days. We hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this one. And thank you so much for watching.